We all know Tom Brady's story by now. The man who eventually became the greatest quarterback of all time was the seventh quarterback taken in the 2000 NFL Draft. 31 teams, including the New England Patriots, spent much of the seven-round event passing on him before those same Patriots took a chance on the Michigan Wolverines quarterback at pick number 199. But if then Baltimore Ravens quarterbacks coach Matt Cavanaugh had his way, Brady wouldn't still have been available that late. In fact, Brady would have had a bird on his helmet instead of flying Elvis. So let's go back to the spring of 2000. Although the Ravens had Tony Banks and Trent Dilfer on the roster, that doesn't mean that Baltimore felt they already had their long-term franchise quarterback in place. Although Banks had thrown a career-high 17 touchdowns the season before, he'd struggled with fumbles and work ethic while playing for the Rams. And Dilfer had just joined the team after an injury-plagued final year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, so no one knew what they were getting out of him. So although the Ravens had more pressing offseason needs, they weren't opposed to drafting a quarterback. Brady had started for two seasons at Michigan while he wasn't athletic or the most polished. His film caught Kavanaugh's attention. He looked like a team leader on the field, a decision maker, and his ability to get the guys around him to play hard jumped off the tape, Kavanaugh told ESPN in 2017. I wasn't brilliant enough to put a first round grade on Brady. I think I put a second or third round grade on him. I really liked him. So the Ravens knew that Kavanaugh liked Brady. But what would they do? Well, the Ravens went offense heavy with their first two picks selecting Tennessee running back Jamal Lewis at number 5 and Florida receiver Travis Taylor five picks later. Would the Ravens complete the trifecta by selecting Brady with their third round pick? Well, the Ravens did select a quarterback, but it obviously wasn't Brady. Instead, Baltimore drafted Louisville's Chris Redman, the reigning Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year. Kavanaugh's hopes of developing Brady immediately went up in smoke, and he instead turned his eyes to Redman a former blue chip recruit. That you probably don't know much about Chris Redman says how that went. But you do know the rest of the Brady story by now. The Patriots selected Brady in the fifth round, in large part because Michigan head coach Lloyd Carr raved about his quarterback, the Patriots executive Bobby Greer. Brady didn't play much as a rookie, took over for Drew Bledsoe early in the 2001 season, won a Super Bowl, and subsequently became one of the greatest players in league history. Yada yada. We know all that. But as we always do here on Legacy Library, we have to wonder, what might have happened had the Ravens trusted Kavanaugh's gut and used their third round pick on Brady? Well, it's important to note that Brady very well may not have enjoyed the success in Baltimore that he did in New England. Putting a successful player on a different team doesn't always mean the results are guaranteed to be the same. Would Brady still have become the first quarterback in league history to throw for 50 touchdowns in the season if his number one receiver was Mark Clayton rather than Randy Moss? But let's also remember Brady, had he been asked to start at any time in his first couple of seasons, would have had an elite running back and a legendary defense at his disposal. Instead of getting crushed by Ray Lewis in the playoff game, Brady and the All-Pro linebacker would have worked together towards a common goal, winning a Super Bowl. And maybe Brady would have solved the Ravens' rotating quarterback problem, one that persisted until the team drafted Joe Flacco in 2008. Sorry, Kyle Bowler, but you may not have landed in Baltimore after all. Steve McNair would have had an opportunity to finish his career elsewhere after his time with the Titans. Drew Bledsoe over in New England? He would have temporarily turned things over to back up Damon Heward in 2001 before returning to take the starting reins after recovering from his infamous injury. There was no Brady to keep him on the bench and force him to play for the Bills. Or maybe things wouldn't have been so good for Brady in Baltimore. Maybe Brady wouldn't have done much with the Ravens and he'd have become a journeyman quarterback, the next Ryan Fitzpatrick or Josh Johnson. Maybe he would have been on the football entirely by, say, 2004. I get the feeling he wouldn't have eventually wound up with Giselle if he'd been a former NFL quarterback turned private trainer in California. When he spoke with ESPN in 2017, Kavanaugh made it clear what he believed would have happened, saying, quote, if we'd taken him, we probably would have won a couple more championships. 
He also added, I would have loved working with him, and it's rewarding that I felt I did a good evaluation on him. I just don't puff my chest out when Tom Brady's name comes up. I thought he had the qualities to succeed, but I didn't realize he could turn into what he did. Or the Ravens would have cut Brady following the 2001 season, the Patriots would have scooped him up, and TB12 and Bill Belichick still would have formed one of the greatest dynasties in sports. The more things change, the more they stay the same. And here on Legacy Library, these are the chapters in sports we're committed to exploring. If you have any forgotten or little-known sports stories you believe we should cover, make sure to leave a comment or shoot us an email. You can find our email in the movie description. Thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and please stay tuned for more.